might not. Although maybe not, if you're doing uh, different levels of courses, you might not have because I was in another meeting at the same time and so on. Um, but uh, if you need to see me about a class, don't, just okay. <laughs> right, like, that's one of the divisions of labor that we make among things. But uh, this has been a tradition now in the math department for well, some three decades, I guess. I did not start it. Uh, it goes back to at least the early 80s. Uh, Paul Poisson was a graduate student back then. He, gave, he decided that his own students didn't have a great grasp of what was going on without that song proof. And so he would give a bonus evening lecture, but then he would open it up to everybody. And it obviously grew. And we didn't build this thing. So uh, I guess uh, it's not going to tell us. I have something to do that. But, uh, <laughs>
function values, and by the way, yeah, the function values are actually over here on the y-axis. The corresponding function values are somehow near to y.
That is the distance between x and a on the number line. Right? If a is here and x is here, then this number is precisely that distance. And it doesn't matter if x is on the other side, because the absolute value takes care of it and turns it into a positive number. So it is still distance. The, the usefulness of this particular expression is that it is doing exactly that. It is measuring the distance between x and a on the x-axis. Thank you. 
it's as small as we need it to be. <laughs> Notice that for a constant function, well, actually, then in that case, f of x minus l is always zero. It doesn't matter what l you <coughs> So delta doesn't need to be arbitrarily small. It just needs to be small enough. Right? In that case, delta equals 100 would be good enough. Delta equals a million would be good enough. Right? The function is constant. Then no matter what delta you use, the function is automatically within the band because it's constant. <laughs> ah, so it's not arbitrarily small, but it's small enough.
this is the picture that we do care about. Let's see where these numbers are. Where are delta and epsilon and so on in this picture? Well, let's see. Uh, here we go. So what does it mean then for x minus a to less than delta? Well, here's a good opportunity to work with that to value any problem. That's why all of your experiments paid so much attention to those in the first week. Right. How do you interpret this statement? X minus a less than delta. What's the other way of writing that very statement?
first thing I want to do is draw a picture. I mean, that's not relevant. If you're asked this question, I would not spend five minutes drawing an accurate picture. But we have a little bit of time together here. What is this function that we're talking about? The lights just went off. <laughs> what, what function are you looking at? Good job, asshole. Fucking the egg <laughs> Yeah, that's that thing of right? I mean, why? No, right, but, I mean, but recognizing that that thing is a function is worth noting, right? I mean, this, this is the f of x in this case, right? It is the limit of that function. So let's graph that function. All right, well, I don't know. Thing is minus it's x minus minus two. 
myself back into the inequality that I need. You go, wait a minute. Yeah, but that's, that's going to be reversed. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. I kind of, I kind of did this backwards, right? Yeah, exactly. That's the problem with this graph. Is that it goes back. <coughs> so what you need to make sure of is that now, when you work forward, this is not the truth. This is the scratch work that helped me figure out what delta was. So the formal proof, I would argue, needs to now be written in a forward direction. That's false. I'm looking for. I'm given. 
distribute it now, minus one third x, minus two thirds, and of course I'll make this take unnecessarily <coughs> long, minus one third x, plus seven thirds, minus three, less than x. Which means that, that is my statement, that is f of x minus l is less than x. And now I get rid of this fact. Have that guy seat, please. That'd be awesome. Show that the limit as x approaches four of x squared minus six x plus ten.
count the equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x. Now, I could certainly see somebody arguing, and I mean, not you, I mean, you know. <laughs> no, less reward rate, or, or, or wherever, right? So, I mean, I think there's a certain sense in which merely using statement 3 is legitimate, that you are implying by writing the equation that both sides of the equation make sense. And therefore, because I have an equation of two things, f of c must be a number. And the limit as x approaches c of f of x must be a number. And therefore, one is true, and therefore, two is automatically true. I like to emphasize, though, that there really are almost three distinct components to that, right? That a function of the function does need to be defined there, the limit needs to exist there, and the two things need to be equal. Is that the case for a polynomial? Yes, that is true for a polynomial at every possible value of c. All polynomials are continuous everywhere. All rational functions are continuous everywhere, except where their denominators are equal to zero. Check it out, your question? Um, yeah, that's right. Tangent, all kinds of problems, right? There's denominators involved. So maybe not. But polynomials, anyway, are continuous everywhere. And so in particular, they're continuous before, and this is a polynomial. And because it's a polynomial, and therefore continuous, and because it's continuous, I essentially get to plug in the value of c to see what the answer has to be. 16 minus 24 is minus 8, plus 10 is 2. The only possible answer to that is 2. All right, so, scrap. Divide by zero. Did it factor because it was quadratic? Did it factor because I chose integers for my coefficients? Did it factor because it just always will factor? Because there, there is a question of what do you do if it doesn't factor? Oh, and hey, wait a minute. Not only did it factor, who did one of those factors? One of them, one of them is exactly what we have some control over. X minus 4 is exactly what we were hoping to do. Thank <laughs> you. 
here then we get to precisely the point of the uncle Bond electric system. How do you control for the other factors? 